this is this is powerful. I love this quote. To be yourself in a world that is constantly and when you think about this quote, this is 100% true. To be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. Hey, what's going on, family? Welcome back to the podcast. I just want to start off this podcast by saying thank you guys for tuning in. As always, I know we just had the holiday pass. I pray that you guys had a great holiday um, and that you were blessed. I'm very thankful that you guys are here. We've been really talking a lot on this channel. If you're watching from YouTube, you may be listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, but we do have a YouTube channel um, and you can check it out. It's uh, youtube.com slash Trevor L. Pope. Uh, that once again, that's youtube.com slash Trevor L. Pope. But on the uh, podcast, on our videos on YouTube, we've been talking a lot about purpose. We've been talking a lot about, you know, what God means to us. What do we mean to God? What it is that God has created us to do and in and, and figuring that out in our own lives. And I was just sharing on our Eat Up Mondays uh, episode uh, recently, a couple days ago, about how I was talking a little bit about purpose, even at the church, at our Bible study. And one of the things that I touched on and I talked on Monday about is the importance of being ourselves, right? And we've talked about this on our, on the channel. We, I'm sure we've touched on it on the podcast, but it's super important, guys, that you be who God created you to be. You cannot be anybody else. And it seems like when I look around, when I evaluate certain things, when I talk to people, when I see certain things online, social media, you know, wherever, it seems like people struggle with being who they are supposed to be. And a lot of times they struggle with that because, you know, they're looking at what everybody else is doing. Um, they're looking at uh, what people are doing and, you know, looking at what they're doing. And because they may not be doing that particular thing or doing it at that level, you know, they don't deem themselves successful or deem that their purpose is important. But how many know that is absolutely not the case? And I was just sharing at the church and I was just sharing on Monday that, listen, everybody is important to the purpose of God. Everybody plays their own role in the purpose of God. And prayerfully, you're playing that role in a good way. And what I mean by that is doing the will of God, right? Doing the thing that God created you to do, being saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and fulfilling the purpose that God has given you to do. Even though we know there's so many other things you can do in this life, right? You know, business, you know, uh, taking care of your family, uh, you know, uh, just so many different things, uh, um, you know, taking care of your community, um, you know, taking care of yourself is like so many different good things that you can do. But when it's all said and done, when we are put in the ground, we want to make sure that all of those things encompassed also us doing the will of God. So we've been really going heavy and hard on that. The importance of being yourself. We talked about, uh, the story in the Bible, where the disciples, they saw a man casting out devils. And if you want to find the story, you can read it in Luke chapter nine, verses 49 and 50. And I encourage you to read that whole Luke chapter nine. I'm, I'm not going to read through it, but just off memory, um, the disciples saw a man casting out devils in Jesus name. Here, this man is being himself, right? Being who he's supposed to be moving in the power of God. And the scripture says that the disciples, they stopped him. They stopped them. This is crazy. This is this is the who's who of the church. This is Jesus' disciples, his handpicked disciples. And the Bible says that they stopped them. So the first thing we think about is why would they stop him? You know, being that they know um, this is a good thing, right? And and he's moving in the power of God because they're witnessing witnessing it with their own eyes. But the Bible says they stopped him. And when we when we hear what they say to Jesus, we find out that they stopped him because he followed not us. That's what they said. Listen, because he wasn't with our crew, we stopped him. But here it is. This is somebody being who he's supposed to be, moving in the power of God, doing the will of God. And guess what Jesus told him, which he should have told him. He says, listen, why did you forbid him? Why did you stop him? He said, those that are for us, you know, are not against us. Those 
those that are for us, they are with us. So why would you be stopping them? And it's important when we look at that story the first and foremost, the first thing we get from that is, listen, don't allow anybody, I don't care how high up on the total pole that they supposed to be, whether that's in ministry, whether that's in regular life, no matter how high you think this person is in life or on what level you think they're doing what they are doing, do not allow them to tell you who you are and what it is that you're supposed to be doing. We got to be very careful with that because many times we see people that have this high position in life or what we deem to be a high position in life, you know, tell us what it is that we are doing and not doing. And that is, you know, that's something that you got to be very, careful about because it happens all the time. And like I said on Monday, that's not to say that you can't, um, you know, go and get uh, knowledge and understanding from somebody about a particular thing that you may, a particular field, you might be getting into something that you've never done. You want to go and get some uh, some instruction, right? Um, that That's not bad, right? But when you have somebody that, you know, just because you're not doing it their way, just because you're not with their company, just because you're not with their ministry, just because you're not doing it the way their ministry does tell you, no, you shouldn't be doing that. We have to be super careful with that. Yes, we definitely need people to help us on our journey, right? Because there are doors that we're going to walk through that somebody else walked through that can help us with that particular door, right? Can help us with what's behind that door, but not to the level of where they they're trying to stop us from doing what we're doing because we're not doing it their way or we because we're not doing it with them, right? You have to be who you were supposed to be. You have to move how you were supposed to move. You have to move at your pace, right? That's another thing to understand. You can't move at somebody else's pace. You can't look at what it is you're doing and what somebody else is doing and feel like, oh, you know, I'm just going too slow or I'm not doing it right because look at how fast they're moving. Look at how many people are connecting with them. It's like, no, you know, some of that, sometimes some of that stuff is just a facade. You know, some of, sometimes that stuff is not even built on the foundation of the Lord. Sometimes that is a foundation of sand. And then we look down the road and we see certain things fall apart and be like, oh, it wasn't really what it seemed, right? So we got to be very careful with that. And I was saying Monday too, that not only do we have to be careful with being being ourselves and not letting anybody discourage us from doing what we're supposed to be doing but we also have to make sure we're not on that other side right on the side of the disciples stopping somebody else from doing what they're doing because they're not with us they're not doing it our way or we think that you know we're a lot higher than we are no we got to be very careful with that because listen we all have been created to fulfill a purpose many of us have been called to ministry to do the works of God uh, to fulfill his will and in his kingdom. And listen, that is the most important business of all, right? Because uh, m most of the time, 100% of the time, it involves getting those home that are meant to get home, right? Reaching out to those that are still out there lost, that are still looking to hear the voice of God. And that's why we can't operate in our own power and in our own strength and in our own mind. We have to be saying and doing exactly what God says, because the Bible Bible says that his sheep knows his voice. So when that lost sheep hears that particular thing said or see that particular thing done, they immediately connect to that and be like, oh, you know, my, my rescue is here. Salvation is here. So we have to be careful that we are not doing things in our own strength, right? That we're not doing things in a prideful manner, that we're not doing things in a way where we think that we know everything, right? And everybody else doesn't know anything. And we can't, you know, you know, hang our hat on our results necessarily, right? Unless it's God that's confirming, listen, you are doing exactly what it is that I want you to do. We can't go by people's pat on the backs. We can't, if you're doing stuff like how, how I'm doing on the internet and podcast, we can't always go by numbers, right? We have to go by, you know, hearing that confirmation from God that, listen, you are on the right track and you are doing what it is that you are supposed to be doing. But a couple of quotes that I shared with them on Monday, and I definitely want to share with you guys here on the podcast. And once again, I just want to say thank you guys for being here. And I pray that you are listening to what it is that I am telling you and that you are encouraged. And if you are encouraged, don't forget to 
Come to our YouTube page. If you're not watching this on YouTube, you know, like the page, share the video, subscribe to our channel, click the bell. It'll notify you every time we upload a video. But this is what we're doing, right? Uh, on our channel, on our podcast, we're just really trying to encourage people, listen, be who God created you to be, right? Fulfill the purpose that God has for your life. It's not about, you know, extravagant things like no matter how small you think it is or how minute you think it is, it is important. Everybody's role is important. That's why the Bible says when it comes to the body of Christ, the foot can't say to the hand, I don't need you, ear to the mouth, whatever. Like there's no part on the body that's insignificant. Every Everybody's role is important. But listen to these two quotes that I read on Monday, and I got some great feedback, and people were very encouraged by this. And some of these quotes we heard already, but sometimes we need reminding of certain things, right? One of the quotes was, Be yourself, everyone else is already taken, right? Everybody else is already taken. So you might as well just be yourself and be who God created you to be and do what you have to do. Another quote says, To be yourself, this is this is powerful. I love this quote. To be yourself in a world that is constantly and when you think about this quote, this is 100% true. To be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. I am here to tell you, if you are somebody walking in this present world with social media, with all the opinions and ideas of people of what you should be and you shouldn't be, what's successful and what's not, if you are walking in this present life and being 100% who you are, that is a great accomplishment. Because what did I say earlier in the podcast? Talking to people, watching people videos, hearing discussions. It seems like people are really struggling to be themselves because of all this vast information that we have. You know, they 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 feel almost like pressured uh, to not be themselves, right? To be somebody else. And guess what? The longer you don't be who you are, the longer you will find yourself, you know, not joyful, not at peace, getting deeper into depression. Some people wonder why, listen, why am I depressed? Why am I always sad? Why am I always down? It could be possibly because you are living somebody else's life. You are in somebody else's body and not living out your own life. I encourage you. It's important, guys. Be who you are supposed to be. And and here's another reason why. The way God created us, right? He created us in a way where, you know, there's there's other people that are attached to our lives, right? Coming behind us, some that might have been ahead of us, right? So when we don't be who we're supposed to be, we don't make those connections. People don't get the benefit off of what it is that we were going to plant or pour into their lives. Think about the people that planted into your life or poured into your life. If they hadn't been who God called them to be or do what God told them to do, then you would have never been able to benefit from them or from what it is that they gave you, right? So it's important to be yourself. And something else that I noticed um, that can really be a problem. And this is something that I, I ended up noticing about myself. So this is me being transparent here. This is something else to think about, not only about being yourself, but remember we talked in the old podcast about self-love, right? And it was a powerful podcast, man. People were really encouraged by that. We talked about self-love, self-care, you know? And one of the things I realized is that sometimes we you know, we're not loving ourselves the way that we should be, right? You know, we we kind of look at what we got on, what we're driving. Like if you ask somebody, listen, do you really love yourself? Oh, of course I love myself. First thing they'll start doing is pointing the outward things, you know, what they have outward. I got this, I got that, I live here. And it's like, no, self-love starts within, right? But I noticed something I took a I took a a, a self-evaluation assessment recently, right? Um, I took an assessment with a company and I can't remember how many questions uh, that they asked on the assessment. And I wanted to take this because I I wanted to dig deeper into some of the areas where, you know, I, 
I'm strong at and in some of the areas where I had limitations at. And, and, and I felt that it would be good for me, right? Because when we look at the scriptures and we know a lot of times it's talking about from a spiritual standpoint about looking in that mirror and taking that self-assessment and being honest with ourselves, you know, that's why I took this assessment because I wanted to understand some things about myself, why it is that I do certain things, so on and so forth. And a lot of times God He's revealing some of those things to us, but sometimes it's like you almost got to see it on paper, right? So I thought this assessment was a good assessment. Um, Most of the stuff I agree with, some I was like, ah, and it could have been how I answered the questions, right? You know, when I think about it after the fact. But one thing is said on there that I thought was really powerful, and I think many of us sometimes can struggle with this, right? And and it could be a reason why we are not fulfilling our purpose the way that we should be. Now, listen to what it said about me on the assessment. It says that I'm willing to make adjustments to accommodate others. I care deeply about the feelings and the emotions of others, right? Which is a great thing. And I do, you know, whether that's outside of ministry, in ministry, since I've been in the church, before I was in the church, in the streets, wherever, you know, I've kind of always been somebody that cared about people and really strived to do my best not to get over on somebody or take advantage of of somebody, especially somebody that, you know, that I may have known, been close or family or whatever have you. But that first part where it says that I'm willing to make adjustments to accommodate others. Now that sounds great, right? Because that's like self-sacrifice, right? That's like, you know, me putting you over myself, which the Bible talks about, right? About us esteeming others higher than ourselves and making sacrifices to help others. There's nothing wrong with that until until it comes to the point of where it is detrimental to you, right? And I think that, how can I say this? I think that area is somewhat where I struggled at, right? Because what I when I started thinking about that statement and really started going over in my head, like really evaluating moments and and situations and times and decisions, like I realized that there are certain times that I should be telling people no, right? No, I, I'm not able to do that because I have X, Y, and Z to do, right? You know, self self sacrificing and sacrificing for others is a huge thing. That's what our Lord and Savior did for us, right? But how many know there are certain moments or certain times in our life that everything is not always a self-sacrifice, right? God is not always telling us to stop doing what you're doing to help this person or do this and that for this person. And what we'll find, unfortunately, with some people, and you don't regret helping them. Listen, I helped you because that's what God laid on my heart. But what you will find is with some people, if you can no longer help them or you push back against what it is that they're asking help for or what it is that you want they want you to do they'll get crazy with you right they'll they'll you know either they'll tell you off or you don't hear from them you know it's it's almost like listen i just want you to do whatever it is i want you to do and not say nothing about it and it's like no there comes a point in time where sometime a light bulb goes off when the spirit said listen that's enough right like this individual or this person or or whatever it is right like listen they're not trying to help themselves. They're not trying to do anything. This is this has become a situation where they're taking advantage of you or trying to take advantage of you. And one thing about me, I don't mind being honest with people about anything. So I'm the type of person that if I feel like you're doing something or you're scheming or whatever have you, you know, and, and you may feel like you're getting over and scheming on me and I don't see it, but sometimes I'm just helping out, right? I'm I'm just being a blessing or doing whatever it is I got to do, but there will come that point where I'm, I'm going to have to say something, right? And it's not in a negative way. It's not in a, in a, in a bad way, but you know, just for my own like spiritual health, right? Mental health, you know, this needs to be said so you can understand, you know, where I'm coming from and what it is that I see that you may be doing. And that's what I expect you to do to me you know, or do for me. And I think uh, we as individuals, sometimes we put ourselves on the back burner and just do everything for everybody else. And sometimes that can be that, that 
a, you know, a lot of times that can be a bad thing for us, right? Yes, God, he's going to lead us and guide us on when to make certain sacrifices and when to do certain things, but you should not be doing it where, where for one, you getting out of the will of God, right? Not fulfilling your purpose because every time you look up, you know, it's like, well, let me stop what I'm doing to do what you need me to do or what you need me to do. No, no. There has to be there has to be a balance there, right? And you have to have that ability to be able to say no, right? Like we, we you saying yes to everything doesn't make you more saved, right? Like sometimes you have to say no, right? We see that with the Lord. There's times where He had to cut things off when they when they were looking for Him after He had fed the five thousand. What did the Bible say? They wanted to make Him king by force. He knew that. But he wasn't going to allow them to do that, right? Because that's not how this works. And when they found him, they was like, Rabbi, we've been looking for you. Where you been? And he was straight up with them off the top. He didn't hold back anything. He says, listen, y'all not looking for me because y'all saw the, the real miracles because y'all tapped into the real miracles and what it is that I really was doing. You guys are looking for me because you ate and were filled. You're looking for some natural type of blessings when you missed out on what it is that I did with the fish and the loaves, what that really was about, letting you know that I can always provide for you and that I'll always be there for you, that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Like you missed out on it. So there's times that we have to be straight up with people. We have to be a hundred with people, right? And also be a hundred with ourselves. And when I took that assessment and I saw that, I started to realize, listen, I got to be more careful with what sacrifices I make and when I make them, right? When God has me doing something and there's something that needs to be done that's important, I need to get that done, right? And not allow anything to distract that. Our emergency is going to happen. Our things going to happen that do come up that I feel in my spirit is is more important or needs to be addressed. I won't even say more important, but needs to be addressed right away. Absolutely. We see that in the Bible as well, right? You know, Jesus healing on the Sabbath. We see the man that was, was on his journey, on his way to good Samaritan, right? And help this man to an end and all that. He did all of these things, you know, in the midst of being on his way to, to on his way on his journey onto where it is that he was going, right? So these things happen, but we have to discern what is, what that is when God is saying, okay, you know, do that and when not to, right? Because we shouldn't allow people to make us feel pressured, right? And then unfortunately, when we can't do what it is that they're asking, you know, when the well dries up, then, you know, now they give you their butt to kiss. It's like, no, we have to be careful with that, guys. Listen, God placed us here to fulfill a purpose. We, you know, life goes by fast. We ain't got all day. You know, it has to get done. But at the same time, we have to do it with wisdom. But I pray that this podcast encourage you guys. I wanted to just drop a little bit of this on you. Just something to think about, you know, because, you know, time is winding up. There's so many different things going on. And like I share with the church, the last thing I want is to the things that God has placed in me to share here while I'm here, to empty out here while I'm here. I don't want to go back to him with that, right? I don't want to go back before the Lord and the Lord is like, well, you know, what are you doing here with that? That was what you were supposed to leave on the earth. That was meant for somebody else. That wasn't meant for you to hold on to. So I believe that this is an encouragement to somebody. And if it is, let us know down in the comments. You know, if you want to email us, the email is in the word seven at gmail.com. You want to tell your testimony, uh, whether you've been encouraged, uh, you know, by some of these podcasts or, or eat up Mondays or in the word messages, let us know, or let us know down in the comments, because when other people see it, know that it encourages them as well, but know that I love you guys. And until the next time we hop on the podcast together, Shalom.